Welcome to my Electron Line. Our next example involves the same two capacitors we had in the previous example. They're both the same size, two microfarads. They both had some initial charge, 40 microcoulombs and 60 microcoulombs. The difference now is that we're connecting them differently. We're connecting the positive end of the one capacitor to the negative end of the other capacitor. So what happens then? Well, notice we have all these negative charges here, we have all these positive charges there. The positive charges are being attracted to the negative charges, so what's going to happen is that these four charges right here are simply going to march along this wire to the other side, negate these four negative charges. That causes these positive charges to move over here because they're attracted to these negative charges, so these four charges march along in this direction and negate for these negative charges. So when that happens at the end, then the next stage will be that you end up with only two negative charges there and two positive charges, and this capacitor will now be uncharged. That is of course not the final state because these charges repel each other, these charges also repel each other, so some of them will move over to this side, both from the positive and the negative end, so that in the end you'll probably end up with something that looks like this, where this positive charge moves in this direction, and that causes a positive charge to be, move, be moved in this direction. It'll repel a positive charge, will negate one of those negative charges, and this side becomes negative. So you can see that since they're the same size, you'll probably end up with the same charge on both sides. But the key here is that when you're connecting the positive end of one capacitor to the negative end of the other capacitor, that the total charge remaining to be divided over the two capacitors is going to be the difference of these two charges, not the sum of the two like we saw in the previous video. In other words, Q total after the charges are beginning to move is going to be equal to Q2 minus Q1, or simply the difference between the two charges. And you may want to put an absolute value sign there because you don't know which one is bigger, so you always, of course, end up with a positive quantity. The total charge will be greater than zero once you're done by transferring the initial transfer charge, canceling one capacitor with the charge of the other capacitor. The rest of it is going to be the same as before. We can go around the circuit and then we realize that when we go around the circuit, we're going to end up with, well, again, when everything is said and done, here we have V1, we have a negative end and a positive end. Here we have V2, we're going to have a negative end and a positive end. Well, I might as well put the plus over here. And that means if we add up all the voltages, we have minus V1 plus V2 equal to zero. In other words, V1 equals V2. And then coming back over here, noticing using the definition of capacitance, that the capacitance is the ratio of the charge divided by the voltage. We solve this equation of the voltage, we get Q over C. That means that Q1, which is the final charge on capacitor 1, divided by C1 must equal Q2, divided by C2, Q2, representing the final charge on capacitor 2. Since, in this example, and we'll see examples where that's not going to be the case, but since C1 equals C2, we can get rid of the C1s and C2, because after all, we're dividing by the same number, and that means that we have Q1 equals to Q2, and we then realize also that because all we have left is the Q total right here, in this case, Q total is going to be equal to 60 minus 40, which is 20 microcoulombs. That's all we have left after the initial transfer charge. We also know that Q1 plus Q2 must equal the Q total, which in this case, Q1 plus Q2 is going to be equal to just 20 coulombs, or microcoulombs, I should say. Now, that means that Q2 is equal to 20 minus Q1, which can then be moved into this equation. Now we have Q1 is equal to 20 minus Q1, or 2Q1 is equal to 20, or Q1 is equal to 10 microcoulombs. And since we know that Q1 is equal to Q2, that means Q2 is also equal to 
10 microcoulombs. And that will be the final charge on each of the two capacitors. Even, they, even though they both started with 40 and 60 microcoulombs, if you connect them with positive to negative, then a lot of the charge gets negated. The total charge remaining is the difference between the two charges, and that gets then distributed between the two capacitors in the same amount for each because they're both the same size. And that's how it's done.